Hey everyone, most of this weekend's news followed the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral at Windsor. There was a 41-gun salute, followed by a phone call from Emmanuel Macron saying that they surrendered, and of course a protest in America demanding a ban on assault-style ceremonial cannons. No sign of Meghan, of course, although perhaps she's claiming to have attended a secret private funeral a few days prior, with just the Archbishop of Canterbury in attendance. I did personally wonder why there were so many people at the event, although I later saw David Icke commenting that the Covid rules about family gatherings don't apply to lizards. All things considered, I found the most bizarre story to be the one about how Prince Andrew expected to be allowed to show up wearing an admiral's uniform, as if the funeral was some kind of fancy dress occasion tailored by Hawks of Savile Row. You know, who would have thought that Prince Philip's least embarrassing son would end up being Charlie, the one that talks to trees? Personally speaking, if I was the Prime Minister, I would have just stepped in and told Andrew that he could wear the outfit, but only on the condition that immediately afterwards he was flown out to the Ukraine, where a major naval skirmish might be about to kick off. You know, see how dedicated to the cause he really is. You know, the situation in Ukraine is actually pretty serious, but sadly that fact is no longer news. One of Ukraine's biggest imports in recent years has, of course, been the Russian military. And after Putin was criticised by NATO for annexing Sevastopol, he was reported to have shrugged and said, cry me a river. Crimea River. Personally, I'm just glad I wasn't born there, mostly because I don't speak a word of Russian, although also because it looks that Vladimir is itching to invade again, and why not? It's an election year and there's seats in the Duma up for grabs come September, so he needs to make sure that everybody knows he's got Russian interests at the forefront, rather than Russian assets in his bank account. In the meantime, of course, Alexei Navalny, the opposition leader, is slowly dying in jail, although half the voters suspect him of being a CIA-backed stooge anyway, and there's no conceivable way that Putin's going to lose this thing. I mean, it's a fairly depressing situation, really, but wasn't it always? It's just a shame that we aren't getting a new Tolstoy or Karl Faber or Shostakovich out of it. You say what you will about Stalin or the Tsars, at least we got some good tunes and some books out of it all. As for these days, the best we can hope from Russia is whatever piece of music they enter into the Eurovision Song Contest next month. Personally speaking, I'd rather just sign up and join the military in Ukraine than sit for an evening of that. Given the sheer scale of the Russian troop build-up on the border, at least the war looks like it'll take less time to be over and done with, at least until another year. You just imagine if the BBC got Graham Norton to commentate on their news channel. I <laughs> jest, of course, they would never do that, because he's white and over the age of 50. Anyway, see you next week. Like these, click subscribe.